gentlemen, y'all strive for gold in your life, right? Gold medals, gold watches, gold everything. However, there is a certain type of man who goes the extra mile. He walks with confidence of a lion and he giggles in the face of danger. He's a big, hairless winning machine. And when he unzips his pants, he sees platinum. That's right. Manscaped would like to announce that their biggest and best ultimate hygiene bundle, the Platinum Package 4.0, is now available worldwide. JT, Manscaped is the leader in below-the-waist grooming. Now trust them with your whole hygiene routine. Amazing. Amazing. Give this man the Academy Award. This is the real deal, guys, but in seriousness. No, it's great. It's actually great. We got the Platinum 4.0 package. They sent it to us. Yes. We've both been using it. Yep. And I believe that for a hairy gentleman... You had success. I did. Uh, when I was on the road, I was traveling overseas. It was actually awesome. Not surprisingly, but you know, I also get a bit hairy shoulders, hairy forearms. <laughs> it just across the board, the thing that really I, I loved was just, it was really quick and, and battery life was great. And it's just, it's a compact little unit. It, it does the business. Yeah. It was, it was really good. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. Like I definitely, I didn't know what to expect at first, but now I'm like total convert. It's really good. I'm exactly the same. And look, so you guys know what's up. Manscaped have partnered with us to sponsor the show. So we'll be plugging them on the show, the audio version and also the YouTube one. And we're super stoked to do that because we both use the product. I actually used it before they sent us the, sure. the, the 4.0 package. And I've always been a supporter of it. I like staying clean and tidy. And Manscaped helps me do that. So check it out. You too can have this same level of hygiene. You can get 20% off and free shipping when you use the code Grizzly at manscaped.com that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com it's time you enjoyed the finer things in life get yourself a platinum package for your platinum package ladies and gentlemen welcome to another bulletproof for bjj podcast i am jt and you're with you don't know joey i like that thanks fam thanks for the intro bro doing what i can uh guys uh our stripes important. Our stripes bullshit is the belt system bullshit. Because mm. when I was coming up, we didn't have stripes. You kind of got your belt when you got it. And then, you know, we can even throw back further and say that my old Taekwondo coach said that in Korea, you're a white belt until you're a black belt. Now, I don't know how much truth there is in that. But he's Savage. Like, you, just, you just stayed the course as long as you had to. They only brought color belts in to satisfy the kind of Western need for achievement. Mm -hmm. That was his take on it. Because that's what his Korean coach had said to him. He's like, oh, you're lucky you get colored belts. But then in other martial arts, like Taekwondo, they used to make us pay for our gradings and we had to grade. Well, I mean, a lot of Jits gyms do that too. You know, they they, they kind of rinse you, you know? So it's, it's very interesting coming from not having any stripes till I was about brown belt. And then it kind of became a thing. And I can see the arguments for, I can also see the arguments against, but I think, talk to me, Joe, what do you think? Can we talk on, um, so, because we did an episode talking about uh, our Our belts, belts. a thing of the past, right? Sure. And there was a lot of, there was a lot of comments on the YouTube um, channel about like people who are like trashing belts. Sure. And a lot of it was like, you know, I'm a fucking, I'm a, you know, I'm a white belt at jiu-jitsu, but I'm a college wrestler and I fucking bash color belts, at the, you know, on the mats sure. and, I, and, I'll, and I'll fucking stay a white belt forever because I'll just keep bashing fools kind of thing. Sure. And I'm like, okay, like I see, I see that mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, there are people who are like, oh, I really like the belts because it kind of gives me an indication of progress and it, you know, encouragement. Yeah. It's great, right? And then I had, and then there was a, there was a comment that really resonated with me from someone which was like, um, belts are for martial arts and no belts are for sports and he's like I prefer martial arts okay and I was like oh tell me more about that and he's like well like wrestling is a sport it's mm. not a martial art yeah. as such anymore no um, even though obviously you could argue that it is right it's the original martial art but sure. he's like it's a sport so you're an athlete it's not about ranking system whereas like it's there's not a spiritual component to it right um Whereas martial arts generally have a spiritual component as well. And, Journey. Yeah, and the belts indicate your Mas- progress. Mastery. That's right. And, it, you know, and it, it's not, he's like, yeah, sure, there's like lower belts coming in and fucking up higher belts in no gi submission matches and stuff. He's like, sure. That's not what martial arts are about, though. It's about self mastery and this path. And I was like, ah, oh, that's a really, that's a really great point. I totally agree. Like, Joey, I, how much self mastery is there between 
two stripes on a white belt and three stripes on a white belt. Well, that's a really good point, right? <laughs> the journey of a thousand steps starts with the first step. Is that the what it is? The first stripe. <laughs> <Something like>? Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyway, I thought so, that was a very important distinction to make. It's yes. like, okay, so, because I, I, you know, we've spoken about it. I'm like, I like the belt thing, right? Yeah. From, for me, it's been a great motivator. Mm. You know, and we kind of, we touched on that on that episode. Um, so stripes, you know, kind of obviously going hand in hand with the belt piece. Mm. What's your thoughts? As someone who you said you didn't have stripes up until Brown. No, look. I, I why think, not? Why was that the case? I think it was in part laziness and then also toughness. So even though, you know, I started jujitsu later in life, but also later in jujitsu, like jujitsu has been around a, a while I didn't start till 2008. Um, that said, I'd already been through a very regimented belt system in, in Taekwondo and you had to bow to everyone. Like you walk in, you got to bow. Everyone higher than you, you had to bow to, right? You get really strong lumbar erectors from oh, so, so much bowing. Um, <laughs> but it was just crazy. Like I, I didn't, because I went to that system as a kid, I just learned a lot of discipline and respect and stuff that I just didn't have that much of to start with. So it was valuable to learn order and respect and don't talk back. And that was good for me. It was good as a child. Then as an adult, I had very little direction doing jujitsu. And basically my first instructor would just, he wouldn't even tell you going for a belt. You'd be rolling and he'd just shove your belt, you know, up your back or something. You'd turn around, you'd be like, what's this? Oh, I'm a blue belt. Hey. You know, and then that was very unconventional. Pat you on the bum. Yeah. Good job, of, mate. Yeah, well done. Yeah. You but it. then you go to, when I went to Brazil, finally, I saw that there was actually a lot more respect and formality around giving belts. But then I also saw. And then they start slapping everyone start, on the back. Yeah, just <laughs> beating you like a jail beating with the belts and stuff. And I was like, whoa, that seems. That's mad respect. Bad. Yeah. Like, yeah, you get some trauma to remember you earned this. And then when I it was a, I didn't start getting stripes till I was brown because I joined abs, like I was training with Absolute when I was a purple belt, but I, I started training under Lockie with Lockie. At, he gave me my brown belt, and then there was this idea of stripes, and it was a feedback mechanism. It's like no, you're not there yet, you know. And you could look at someone who had a really seasoned belt with four stripes on it. You're like they're ready, you know. They've they've done the time. They've earned their stripes, so to speak. But putting all that to the side, I don't think stripes motivated me. I wasn't there for the stripes. I was there for the throwdown. Right. Like the beatings. I was, I was there to get loose and throw down. Like I enjoyed that aspect of the physical nature, the biff, so to speak. I actually drew really good satisfaction from that. So if I came to training and didn't have hard rolls, I kind of was like, oh, it was a waste. I, I actually felt the need to be kind of rinsed to yeah. have a good training session. And, you know, Whatever, that to the side. I derived no satisfaction from stripes. Speaking of which, you just visited Absolute, didn't you? Yeah. How was it? Uh, did you get rinsed? I did. Uh, I, uh, yes, I did. <laughs> Who <laughs> rinsed you? Ben Hodgkinson. Shout out Ben Hodgkinson. What up? Sandbag and Crionche. <laughs> My lifetime mortal enemy. <laughs> yeah, we had a funny conversation because Ben has consistently lost to Bob Frias. And Bob is a powerhouse. He lost the ADCC trials to Bob. Yeah. But had then, I think he might have beaten Bob at a different comp, but it wasn't the trials, right? Ben's whole focus was to go to ADCC. When we were purple belts, we fought each other nine times, like in the finals. You and Ben. Yeah. Wow. I think I only beat him once, maybe twice, maybe. <laughs> I've, I have more silver medals losing to Ben Hodgkinson than any other human. Holy shit. And we were mortal enemies for years. Until he joined, he joined Kit's team, which became Absolute, and I came in with Lockie. Right. So now we're teammates. We had to deal with each other, and it was weird for a long time. But I was just like, "Come on, man! Like, you know, we can be frenemies. You know, like we can we can be adversaries, but we can be friends. <laughs> uh, you know, we're cool now. But it's just like he's just spent the last two three months at uh, B team. Yeah. And even though physically he's probably not at his strongest or fittest, fuck. Savage shit. All over me. <laughs> Damn it. Man, I couldn't believe when I met him in person for the first time how fucking tall and long he's he is. He's so tall. Yeah. And he's got the worst posture too. Yeah, like, like if, if you stood up straight. If you stood up straight, he'd be, he'd be even taller. Often those tall cats do because they're always talking to people beneath they gotta, them. They've got to look down. Yeah. How's it feel, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's one of those things. Um, 
So yeah, b- being there, unfortunately, Lockie and Livia were away. They're at um, Hamilton Island uh, doing like, oh the camp, the camp. Of and so some friends of ours were there. Beck was there. Marina, Marina was there. Yep. Chloe was there. So that's that's cool. It was a bit sad the timing didn't work out. A uh, shout out also congratulations. You were hoping to get a stripe, weren't you? No. <laughs> hey, what's up, Lock? <laughs> Can I get that stripe? Hey, look, on my yeah, bike? Been back for a couple of years now, come right? On, that's like five years. <laughs> that's, come on. Hey, what's a degree worth? <laughs> 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 Actually, no. I've had a few people say to me, "Shouldn't you be one stripe by now?" And I'm like, "Yeah, but like, come on, like, I'll, I'll, I'll be just com- counting. I'll be, I'll be completely honest. My dedication to the art has reduced compared to my dedication to others. Like, I've put a lot more time and energy into trying to help more athletes, help more jujitsu people, which meant my own level of jujitsu has gone down. Yeah, I don't really feel worthy, Joe mm. Worthington. And that, you know, you might say it's a mentality thing, but I'm just like, no, I've, I've put my energy outside of jiu-jitsu i don't feel like my jiu-jitsu is that good right now no i don't feel like we just fucking spoke about bro shut the fuck up i'm a champion no excuses (laughs) (laughs) you know like i try to express some humility here you're like you have no empathy you have no humility what's your problem like come on bro give me a chance i'm just trying to to prove i'm a human but no i i think honestly but if you're someone who needs a stripe and the system works for you good but then some gyms are extorting people some people are like, you have to pay to get yeah. privates to get your grading. It's like a business. It's actually not even about um, achievement. And that's that's my that's why I start to go, oh, that's wrong. Yeah. That's not right. So the first gym I trained at, um, which which evolved in in terms of you know what it was called and stuff, but I was there till Brown Belt and I've told this story before, but um, they didn't do stripes. Yeah. And then sometimes they did, I think. And now it's like, hey, <laughs> hey guys, fuck, let's get some stripes. And everyone's like, oh shit, we're doing stripes now. Okay. <laughs> and then you don't see them again for four years. Right. And so it was the same kind of thing where it's like, hey, you're a purple belt now. And you're like, wow, like I haven't been acknowledged for four years or whatever, you know? Um, and that gym was not a successful team in term, as a business, right? right? And here's the thing that, that has to be mentioned. Like, you can have all of the strong beliefs around what breeds the hardest killers and warrior mindset and i'm fucking doing it i'm running my academy like this but if you can't pay the rent you don't got an academy it's not a state so you yeah so you can go and be in as 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 you know kind of staunch about it as you want but if the business isn't successful it won't stay open mm. so there is a you got to straddle a line there that's like create the culture that i want and instill the values that i believe in but also build a business that works yeah so there's arguably you know, uh, quite a few jiu-jitsu gyms that just go hardcore business, which are like the McDojo vibe where it's all very franchised and very productized and yep. that whole thing. And I think most of us tend to give them a bit of a hard time, rightly so. And then there's those ones where it's like, nah, we just fucking battle it out in the garage and there's no fucking stripes and fuck that. You know, we got white belts tapping purple belts over here. It's like, well, that's great. But you guys probably aren't going to... Like, you're not going to stand the test of time. No. It's probably all based around the individuals that are there right now. Yeah. And once that guy has to go get a knee surgery and that girl leaves because whatever, his life situation change, you, the team disagrees. What's like, disintegrates. On? So, yeah. in any case, um, you know, I look at that gym and I'm like, well, Stripes would have done really well there because there was just so many people that had no idea where they stood. Where they were at. And it was so long in between drinks yes. that, like people would drop off and you know you see so many people come and go i I think culture has changed i think jujitsu was less competitive from a business standpoint 15 years ago yeah this is my take at least from the australian perspective so if you're anywhere else anywhere else in the world feel free to disagree with me but i believe jujitsu business has become more and more competitive there's more gyms you, you have to be able to provide a good service. Yeah. It's not just simply we got the best competitors anymore. So there wasn't a need for it back then. It was like, Whoa, if you're tough, you stay. If you're not, rack off. Whereas now it's like, well... Rack oh, off. Rack off. That's a very Australian thing to say. <laughs> I haven't said that since I was like in the second grade. Yeah. Rack off, man. Because <laughs> I wasn't allowed to curse. Um, but no, it's, it's kind of interesting that now people, they want to bring their kids. You know, they're not trying to be a champion. They just want to, you know, they want to connect with the martial arts. Yeah, it's not all about being a hardened warrior. No. and, and okay, learn, learn this cool skill set. A little bit of acknowledgement helps keep them in the game because they might get disheartened very easily. Dude, it was imp- like, so when I went to, when I started training with Adam, yeah. right, and Adam's like, hey, 
Adam is comes from you know from Alliance. His gym is no longer Alliance. Shout out to Vantage. Yeah, uh, but he was like, "Hey, we got a system," and he's like, "If you're coming here and you're going to train with me, I'm going to grade you under that system." And mm. it takes as a combination of attendance and also skill development that we keep a track of, and that guides when you get stripes. and And I was like, "Cool, like that sounds good to me." What it did was it took me from a period where I was relatively unmotivated to being motivated, and, and you know, I remember getting the stripes on my brown belt and yeah. I'm like, holy shit. And then it was like, fuck, I'm on three stripes. And he's like, and he gave me, I remember he gave me the last one. And he said, bro, this, this one's overdue. Just letting you know, like next one's the big one. And I'm like, fucking cool. And so as much as I, I like, you know, I like all of that kind of warrior spirit stuff that, that the, the no stripes was all about. I think him having that system and me being out, me being able to know, where I stood yep. was actually pivotal in me getting to black belt. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Cause I wasn't, cause at that stage I wasn't about like, let's just get the hard training. Yeah. You know, I still wanted that a little bit. Don't get me wrong. No, no, but man, I think he, I think he trained harder as a brown belt. Just saying, um, no, I think, <laughs> well, I got nothing to prove now. <laughs> no, I think it's done. I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We haven't rolled for a little while. Um, no, I think the deal is, well, at least for me, I I'm give, doing privates with sandbag and Crianche. <laughs> <laughs> on how to teach, get, teach how me to your get, ways how to get taller <laughs> how to be six how do you six? catch jt all the time ben? just other than fighting him non-stop for 10 years <laughs> and knowing his whole game <laughs> yeah sure but um how do i get a mullet like you like how do i do that how can i look like a degenerate can you teach that um honestly i give stripes but i see that it's more important for others like i see somebody and i, I want to give them acknowledgement because i know that if we can get them to the next step in terms of feeling like they're making progress, it will kind of take care of itself. But they, they need that little bit of, oh, you know what? You are getting somewhere. I know it feels like life sucks right now because you're a white belt and everyone's on top of you. But actually, you're technically getting better. Oh, cool. And they, they feel you know, uh, you know, empowered to keep, keep the journey going. Yep. And, and that's what you want. You want people to go from lambs to lions. And that's tough. Like It's a long time that you've got to suck before you get good. But then there's people who just don't need it, like John. You know, like wrestling John Mon's partner. Oh, uh, yeah. John you know, Osborne. Yeah. He'll just, he'll double legged anything. He'll double legged a truck. You know, that guy can power double anything. He, he doesn't mind. And it's not that he's not a smart guy, he's actually quite intelligent. But uh, he doesn't need are you, it. Are you, are you saying that like people who blast double are not intelligent typically? Is that why you had to make that distinction? You lead with your head forward, expose yourself for the guillotine, and just shoot. Every time, like it works for John Burroughs. No, no set up. Wait, John, actually, John Burroughs is a pretty smart guy, but I'm just saying it, the thing about it is there's a certain level of commitment it takes to be the blast double guy, you know, like that's yeah. a, and everyone knows you've got it. You've just got to, you know, get the timing. Right. If you've got the timing and the setup, it's beautiful, but you know, the no setup, just, just basically rugby tackle, just yep. try and tackle everything. That's an approach to life. You can have that. <laughs> But what I'm saying is that guy doesn't need encouragement. If anything, that guy needs kind of pulling back a little bit and say, no, nah, man, just try this or finesse that or whatever. Whereas someone else who's maybe a little bit, maybe they're not sold on jujitsu yet. They, they need buy-in somehow and recognition can help. Yeah. So I'm saying that for me, Stripe's not so important, but I can see the value for someone else who isn't as, you know, who's got a different mentality. I, I, think, I think there is some value in it because I want more people to do jujitsu. And if you getting a stripe and getting some acknowledgement helps you and, and helps you go to the next step, man, we should do it. You know? I, I, I think it's it's perfectly it's perfectly valid and, and if it helps grow jujitsu, I'm for it. I was listening to part of a podcast with um Elvis Sinisic. Oh yeah. Oh gee. Yeah, who was the first Australian to ever fight in the UFC. UFC, yeah, yeah. Um, he runs King's King's Academy here yeah, in King, Sydney. King's MMA, yeah. King's yeah. MMA. Uh, yeah, pioneer of Australian MMA and Jiu Jitsu. 100%. Um, but he was talking about, and I don't, I'm probably going to mess up some details here, but he started, Standard. I think. Yeah, right. Um, up on the Northern Beaches, was it, is it uh, John Will? Yeah. John Will and Anthony Lang, and he was training with them, and I think. Well, so John Will is actually based in Geelong, but he, uh, they, they are under the Machado lineage, which is under John Will. Okay. Yes. Okay, right. So whoever, yeah, he was doing the thing here in Sydney. Yes. But he was saying that they, um, I think at the time, because there was so, because it was like, I think John Will was, 
he came back as a he went to Brazil, got his blue belt, right? Right. And and we should get him on the podcast actually to hear yeah. this journey. Yeah, definitely. But as I understand, it was like he was a blue belt teaching, running a school here. Yeah. And that was the level of jujitsu that we had, and still present. You know, that still happens in many parts of the world. Sure. Um, but the time it took to go from white to blue belt was like a really long journey. Mm. So I think Elvis said they started using the kids, the kids colors as like precursors to blue belt. Oh, okay. And, and what else, one thing I was said was like coming from a martial arts background, he's like, we weren't used to this like one belt every few years. Thing. Yeah. 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 He's like, it just culturally wasn't what we were, what we knew. Mm. And I think that's really interesting, right? Cause if you come from another martial art where it's more consistent, you know, recognition every kind of couple of months or whatever it yeah. is, you being jitsy, you're like, fuck, am I even improving here? Does anyone even, is anyone even noticing? Yeah. Like it is a long time. I, but I think this is like a coaching thing too. This is a communication piece. And just because someone's really good at Brazilian jiu-jitsu doesn't mean they're really good at relationship management or, you know, it, they might not have a lot of EQ, right? You might have this champion coach really good at technique, but then maybe they're just, they're not very relatable. It can be like that sometimes, right? I, I think stripes is a communication tool you might have a coach who doesn't give stripes but they're always letting you know hey man i see you're doing something good there that's cool and you're like, oh, okay so that's enough to keep you going you know and so i i mean i i'm of the school of thought that really once you buy into jujitsu which i think is a couple years in i think the first couple of years you're a bit vulnerable to quitting and it does happen you know we talked about blue belts quitting there's an interesting paradigm here with goals. Goals have been getting trashed lately. So I really, I'm really, well, you like know, the, the, the act of goal, goal setting, goal setting okay. is a mistake. Right. You know, this is, this is a, just a popular bullshit chat within uh, personal development, which I, I'm obsessed with, but they're saying that in case you couldn't tell <laughs> just here with my uh, mono journal, just writing on my notes, personal reflections, um, fifth time today no it's one of those things that i was like what that's fucking come on goals you need goals and they're like no no no, because there's been a study to show that if you think too much about what you want to achieve there's this weird feedback where you feel like you've done something by reflecting or thinking about oh, right. i'm gonna do all these things tick <laughs> like yeah by writing it down and putting it in a journal I'm like oh, my work's done today yeah you didn't do the work though. Like the, you didn't go and then cold email 20 people. You didn't pick up the phone and do the shit you needed to do. And then they're saying that there's this, this, there's this habit where people really talk around what they need to do as opposed to just taking the action. Right. So they're saying that actually sometimes setting a really long-term goal can affect, have a negative effect on your ability to actually action it. Mm -hmm. It's like kind of getting too satisfied with yourself right. type, type thing. Look, I, I think if you've like really bought... Like a premature ejaculation kind of vibe. <laughs> Is it that sort of thing? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Like I'm going to earn $5 million <laughs> next year. Baby! <laughs> 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 You're mentally jerking off the Tim Ferriss. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not, that's not what I meant. But sure, whatever. Um, what, what I'm saying is... I. They were trying to say that you can get really addicted to watching motivational videos on YouTube. But, you know, so like, yeah, just to crack it. How many podcasts did you reference to me this morning? <laughs> well, I mean, There's this other business podcast, Joey, and what they said was... <laughs> <laughs> I only listen to five podcasts a day, guys. <laughs> um, not including our own. Um, that's the thing, like... I love that you're bringing this right now. Keep no, going. I want, to, I, want to, I want to say this. Like, this is definitely... I, I feel that I've been guilty of this in the past, but what I've done differently is... I take action first and then reflect on it. Like as much as I already have my plan, I, I think the thing for me is to make sure I do that one big thing. I, I take the high leverage action and then post, kind of reflect. That's the way I approach it. Circling back around is the whole like stripes, belts. You get too caught up in that and not focused on just getting better at jujitsu, you fucked yourself. That's a great point. It does have the power to become... People get like too focused on it. They're a four stripe and I'm a one stripe. Yeah. And nah, 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 nah. Shut the fuck up. Like you're working on your technique. Are you trying to get better? Or, or you know, like it's, it, it degenerates. The conversation goes away from just overcoming challenges to just posturing about status, which I think is, is wrong. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fair point. It's funny. Um, 
anytime like tell me this and i'm sure everyone listening can feel this when you're when you're in class and class is wrapping up and then the coach is like walks over to where they keep the tape or whatever or, sure. or maybe the belts oh, and, they, oh. and and everyone's like oh, oh shit dang. and you always are like there's a part of you that's like maybe it's me <gasps> Right, even as a black belt, yeah. right? I remember going to my first grading after getting my black belt. I was like, yeah. I don't know, three months later. And I still had that feeling that of little- like, maybe I'm getting rewarded tonight, <laughs> right? You're not getting shit tonight. You don't get anything for years. But, but yeah, that, and, and then you're like, and then you're like, no, don't, th- don't think, yeah, you see how straight pay attention, but then you're like, you get self-conscious and you're like, no, it's not about you. Like, stop thinking like that, you yeah. know? And you, but it's just so, we're so like conditioned in that moment. We are. Um, but the, yeah, I do, I, I totally get that. I remember when, you first gave some stripes here at Jungle Brothers mm. and it was the first, it was kind of the first time people were given, or maybe it was, it was some stripes and some blue belts and there were some people there that were like, um, I remember talking to some people like, yeah, I'm really motivated just to train because I want to get that first stripe as well. And you're like, ah, oh, that's so cute. Like, yeah, it's nice. You're so like the, the, the team is so young yeah. and everyone's so early on the journey that like getting to the first stripe on your white belt is like this, you know, significant yeah, achievement, it is, yeah. which it is. To an extent. Once you're a purple belt and, you, you know, you think about those white belt stripes, it doesn't mean anything at that stage. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, becoming too focused on that outcome versus focusing on the process and letting the outcome come when it's time, that's – I guess that's a risk of any kind of reward process or goal-setting process, isn't it? Sure. And and I think that this comes from just a bit, a bit of perspective. If you've seen someone do something really hard before – they're usually okay with the knocks. They'll ride it out. But if you get people who haven't had much challenge in their lives, everything is tough. You know, and I think this is true of life in general, whether it's business, whatever you do. Uh, I've got two blue belts in my mind. Uh, one of them is really good with drama and everything's a drama and everything's about them. And the other one... Wait, is really good with drama? Like, no, just like... Or like he's always having drama. Yeah, he's a total, right? total dramatist. Uh, and then the other one is like just rides it out doesn't complain shows up oh yeah you know that sucked but whatever rolls on they have kids they are a parent they definitely are a great parent they put a lot of time and energy into their kids and you you can see that when they're not doing their own thing that they're they're just they even bring their kids to training you know yeah and then you see it's it's a hard fucking setup but they make it work they make it work and then the other person is no kids, you know, yeah. kind, kind of holds a job, but it's just it's just very self-centric. So they bring that to, to the environment too. Yeah. So it's just interesting because they're friends, they hang out, you could look at them, they're both, they're both blue belts, they both train together, they're, but so different in terms of their experience. If one got a stripe, they're like, yeah, I got the stripe. The other one's like, oh, oh that's nice. Oh, cool. You know, but they, 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 there's no expectation. Yeah. They're just they're just doing their life and they're just showing up and they just they keep they just stick to it because they they love it and that's what matters and everything else is just kind of gravy. Whereas the other person, the acknowledgement, the achievement, yeah, you better give it to me. Like, you know, it's it's it's, it's, it's a very different approach. Uh, in terms, of the same thing. They're going to progress in the same way, but they are two very different, um, uh, very different blue belts. You might say, even though they might they've got the same stripes, same belt, similar age, very different. Uh, approaches to the game i close before we wrap up i want to ask a question what do you think of the like you know so we kind of spoke in the beginning about this sport versus martial art distinction yeah and i think that jujitsu is sort of like with the whole emergence of nogi and and that side of the game i think and actually with even prior to that just with the nature of jujitsu competition i think jujitsu often doesn't know where it sits it's part martial art and you get gyms that are very centric on that. And then it's like part sport where it's like all about competing and winning and that kind of thing. Um, But with the giving of stripes and whatnot, how important is, are the qualities that the student exhibits outside of their technique on the mats? I think there is a personal development element. Like I have not graded a person because they were being a jerk. Like they're kind of being a bit of a mat bully and I had to pull them aside and say, man, don't behave like that. <laughs> like, yeah, you might, your technique might be whatever, but you shouldn't be treating people in this way. I, I feel that you can, jujitsu can bring out really good qualities in people and then it can also amplify not, not as good ones. 
And so that's just me as a coach, as a bias. Uh, I think it is important that people aren't just improved. I think that is the martial arts side of it, which is the personal improvement. Whereas when it comes to like pure sport, it's just about, oh, did you knock the guy out? Did you win? How many tickets did you sell? Are you Conor McGregor? Like, uh, Conor McGregor or you GSP? Both champions, but you can definitely see that GSP's got that grounding in karate and he's also Canadian. One's a martial artist, the other one's a cat. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Both very successful yep. yeah, on different levels in life. But all I'd say is that I have to always circle around. Like when I'm, when I'm not behaving, when I'm getting out of line or whatever, I got to circle around and go, am I being a good person? Maybe I'm being a shit person right now. Maybe my ego or whatever the fuck is going on in my head is causing me to be a bad person. That's not what I want to be. I don't want to be a bad person. At the end of the day, all things said and done, I, I want to be a good person. And I feel like jujitsu gives you an opportunity to to be merciful and you know give give people a bit of leeway. You know, and then you don't you don't have to smash someone to beat them. And so, like you're saying, this distinction between martial art and sport, I believe humility in sport is far rarer than in martial arts but because we have this convergence between sports and martial arts mma and now um no gi submission grappling and that becoming a more dominant sport you know humility is not gordon ryan's strong point but the guys help make the sport popular yeah so you're like what does that then do for culture so maybe then we have to go someone's a great athlete uh, and maybe they're a terrible person. So maybe you can learn from their ability to do a thing but not have them as your life coach. That's a really interesting point. And, and you know, something there like I've heard people mention it regarding, say, Gordon and uh, his coach, John Danaher, where it's like, you know, you look at what Danaher talks about on social media and stuff. It's all about the, the art of jiu-jitsu, the technique. And, you know, like respectfully, like he is, you know, he is the master, Right. The but the, the I think what's kind of what can be misguided there is when other coaches or other influencers within the realm and you're an influence like if you're coaching people you're an influencer right you got students coming in to be influenced by you to be taught by you if you look at that and go that is the pinnacle of jujitsu coaching that's what I need to do I think that can be a bit misguided because it it discounts or it disregards the whole personal development spiritual aspect of a martial art mm. and it focuses just in on what's most effective in competition yeah of course if you're trying to breed the best competitors that's your shit you should do it but yeah i think there's a real strong thing there in the um the the the, the development of the individual outside of their skill set the counterpoint to danaher because from what i know behind closed doors danaher is not a particularly good human um you uh, to qualify that we can talk about it another time my counterpoint is Julio um, Julio Cesar, the coach of Rodolfo Vieira. Mm -hmm. There's a documentary about Rodolfo many years ago when he was just wrecking everybody before before Bouchesha came through, and it's all about GF team. It's all about Rio, and his coach said, "Jiu-Jitsu is to form the citizen. We we you know we take a man and we make him a good citizen. The champion is just." kind of extra that's just on top but the first thing we've got to do is make these people good people and i was like whoa i hadn't heard anyone really speak of jujitsu in that way but he was like you know learning humility learning control you know that's i was like wow that's that's pretty epic it's pretty powerful um and so i'm like man and he's so well loved and respected and he's just like a real ghetto coach. He doesn't get a lot of money or he got some fame from being Hadolfo's coach. But I was just like, that philosophical approach to me lends more to life than yeah, just whatever Ashi Garami is. Yeah. <laughs> White guys talking butcher Japanese about Brazilian <laughs> Jiu Jitsu. You know what I mean? Hey, good point. Cool. Good chat, fam. Thanks for listening today, guys. Hey, um, you know, we got the program. It's gonna help you get more athletic and on the mats. If you want to get on it, it's free to start. Go to bulletproofforbjj.com. Use the code BJJ Podcast. You get 20% off. Had a guy text me on the Instagram the other day say, hey, man, about to sign up for the program. Have you got any discount codes? <laughs> listen to pod, bro. I was like, yeah, fucker. Why don't you jump on the podcast and like listen? Like everyone else has to. 
I was like, yes, it's BJJ podcast. He's like, thanks, man. You got a podcast? <laughs> yeah. He probably sold that code to someone else. <laughs> Um, might have. Yeah, that's right. But uh, anyway, if you are listening, if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you. We appreciate it. We're growing the YouTube thing. Subscribe to the channel. It helps to, to do all that. We appreciate it. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, bro. Cheers. Awesome.